uh, good morning all. Professor uh, Arjunigana. Good morning. Can you hear me? I'm Professor Pradeep from IIT Gauhati. Good morning, sir. This is Ravi Linganavar, and on behalf of KLE Engineering College, I welcome you for this session, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Ravi. Yes, sir. Uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll start the session, sir. Uh, Sachidharan, sir, can we start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can start, sir. Yeah, it's exactly 10. Uh, good morning, all the participants for this uh, ERVR FDP, Atal uh, FDP for one week. So yesterday we had a very good session so from Prasad Omkar and uh, other uh, uh, eminent speakers. And uh, today we have one of the best, India's best teacher, scientist, researcher, and uh, whatnot, I can say. He works in the field of multi interdisciplinary programs related to creative design, innovation management and technology. Over 34 years of experience, he established India's first and pioneering lab that is UE, UX, UI, AXD, it's a research lab, IIT Guwahati. And it has given us one of the best designers in the world. And it made, he started the in, uh, interaction design specialization stream in IITG, uh, BDES program in 2003-2004, which played a significant role in the success of department worldwide. And then, uh, Sir has already, uh, he is the founder of the MDES program, CPDM IISC Bangalore. He has completed his first industrial design HCI PhD from IISC Bengaluru. And uh, he is the advisor and control, uh, controller for many of the government agencies such as IPR and in education. And he is a consultant for IT and creative industry. And uh, what not? Uh, the things is like one hour also I can speak on the today's speaker, but he is nominated as the best uh, teacher award in, in the field of uh, innovation and creativity in 2016, got a president, president medal and uh, by MHRD. And he is authored around more than more than in journal, more than 125 plus in journal conference, monographs, book chapters, and he is having around uh, many number of patents also, design patents. So here I would like to present Professor Pradeep Yamiyavar from IIT Guwahati. And uh, I'm proud to say that I'm his student. Under him, uh, I have completed my PhD. So here I present Professor Pradeep Yamiyavar, sir, for the current session. Thank you, sir. Pradeep, sir, now you can start, sir. Thank you. Uh... Dr. Ravi Lingandnavar, that was a very long uh, reading of the CV. Uh, good morning to all the participants uh, of this FTP program. And I'm now, without losing a wasting time, going to share my screen. So I would like to have feedback post disabled participant screen sharing. So it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Sir, now you can share, sir. Hello? Uh, sir, now you can share. Yeah. Yes. This takes a little time. The nets are slow. Yes. I have now started sharing the screen. Yes, so is my screen visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, I must uh, thank uh, uh, the KLE, uh, Dr. Ms. Sheshkari College of Engineering and Technology at Belgao, uh, the mechanical department, Dr. Sangoli also, to uh, you know, invite me to give a uh, talk uh, in segmented reality and virtual reality FTP program that has been sponsored by AICTE. So today morning, 23rd February, 2021, for one and a half hours, uh, I am now uh, going to speak on designing methods and uh, uh, case studies in AR, VR, augmented reality and virtual reality. 
So before I start, I would like to proclaim that some of the contents of what I am now going to present has been taken off from several sources and then I acknowledge that these sources are the original copyright holders of all the content. And this uh, content, including its recordings in all forms, is prohibited from being redistributed or shared either in public domain or in private by any means by its intended recipients. In any case, content is only for educational use of registered participants of PR, FTP course, Kelly Engineering College, which they can make use of for their personal use. Thank you. Having now fulfilled the formalities, what I am going to do uh, in the uh, next 1.5 hours is starts by spe speaking on AR, augmented reality, then move on to VR, and uh, if time permits, touch upon MR. We'll see what they are. I'm going to define them in this next one of us. I'm going to deconstruct each one of them, especially AR and VR. I'm going to talk about designing content, the methodology, and mention the tools and software that are used. And as I go along, I'll be using some case studies to describe uh, what is uh, the essence of this particular new field. I'm going to show you a lot of videos or uh, GIFs uh, on the uh, last version. So uh, my distribution of slides and times, not uh, linearly, but uh, you know, sarcastically is being that I would cover all this in, 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 in quite a lot of So it's going to be very fast in certain slides. And uh, because it's a very intensive and very passionate area for me also. So what the first thing that I would like you to note is that I'm going to speak from the human-centered designing point of view. It means that my role in entire presentation would be from what we call as designers, the creative designers, specialization point of view. Technology and software will not be covered in depth, though they will be you know, covered in terms of their applicability. So having said that, now, um, uh, you know, uh, what is AR? Actually, AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, and MR, mixed reality, are a continuum of the same technology that we are speaking. So what is this? If we say reality, the real world outside is, if you call it reality, AR is augmented reality the real world with an added layer of virtual goodness, as someone would like to you know, talk about the positiveness of AR. Then VR is an entirely virtual world. It doesn't exist uh, as what the world exists in AR. We'll see these confusions and we'll talk about it much more. So this is, and it comes from both the sides. And uh, this entire continuum uh, is, is uh, you know, going to be traversed by us in this next one and a half hours. Argument, actually, what is A? Argument means to expand, to escalate or intensify. Argumented reality in simple terms means to take the reality a step ahead and expand its application. That's exactly what we do in this field. AR suits certain applications more than VR, virtual reality. VR performs where AI cannot. Each actually has its own device, its own purpose, its own potential. AR can be loaded onto mobiles or tablets and other devices, whereas VR is a variable dedicated device. So the, 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 the device also matters in the definition of AR and this side on the right is VR, virtual reality. Now, the types of environment that one creates, uh, I said this, the, if you compare it to the real environment, augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, the devices are, some are handheld, some are spatial devices, some are head mounted, and today's technology is so small that already Apple is thinking of using a very simple specs like device. Mobiles, everybody knows about it. It's mobile and it's green uh, is now uh, everybody's stable. So, but AR actually supplements reality. 
we are completely replaces reality by a virtually created reality. This is the main difference between the two. So here uh, in this picture, you see that augmented reality overlays digital content and information onto the physical world as if they are actually there with you in your own space. So here the table is real, but the chairs are virtual and the table lamp is also virtual. So, you know, uh, the, the applications uh, are uh, very, very large and uh, there is no limit in this imagination of the engineers, the designers who will make use of this particular new emerging technology. So we, uh, from medical to entertainment, to military, to engineering, to robotics and aircrafts, and uh, it's so many, so many areas. We'll see some case studies about it. User actually maintains a sense of real world while using AR. In VR, the visual senses of the user are under the control of the system. So these are some subtleties that you will have to uh, absorb before we start <coughs> the whole. Uh, so augmented reality is in is an interactive experience where digital information is overlaid onto the real world environment using a phone, tablet, or a table device. So here is a GIF. So an image, object, or an entire facility can be activated in AR with the help of a smartphone or a wearable device. So uh, when it comes to differences between virtual and augmented reality, there are completely different technologies at the user end. However, to build applications, both AR and VR use similar software tools. So here, you are, what you see is uh, an application in, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, education. Uh, the, the, the child is coloring the books, and very soon the child loses interest in a simple figure. So an AR application uh, actually creates more interest by making a three-dimensional three -dimensional view of this actually as it is and as the child paints you can see the painting on the, the, the actual thing so this is an added we are augmenting the experience we are making it much much more interesting and uh, uh, you know uh, real for uh, for anybody to use so unlike vr ar is based on a footprint a real surrounding and it only adds additional computer generated data like animation or three-dimensional objects to it instead of replacing the entire virtual world. So here, uh, the device is there, its camera is actually picking up this thing. And uh, this is a real world on the left-hand side. And this you know, is creating another world uh, on the real world. Uh, and this is what is called as augmented reality. With AI, you can find directions in an emergency, for example, here, you know, this is an AR uh, uh, in, in use in an automobile. And it, 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 the, the surface and the device in, in flat 2D may not matter. It could be a mobile, it could be, you know, the car screen dashboard, whatever. So AR is quite, quite popular today. You know? All the younger generations using, if you go to AR in Google search, you can use AR to place 3D objects right in your own space directly from search and websites on Chrome. So uh, they're making it more and more easy to, for their use and the right now it's all in the public domain for, for entertainment, fun, Pokemon, or whatnot, but all technologies start that way. So, uh, Microsoft Point is not responding. My God, wait, ah, okay. So now I will now show you a very interesting commercial application of uh, augmented reality. I hope it works uh, and I hope it should be possible to, no, it did not work. So uh, it takes time. Let me wait uh, and see if I can still um, try it. Now these technologies are uh, slow. So, um, well, I don't think I can connect directly to the that, okay, I'll skip this and I will now proceed to I just wait for a second. Yeah, yeah, it does. So I will play it and you can see the commercial application of it. I hope, yeah, it works. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, we, we, the technologies are new gods. We don't know uh, how they behave, what they behave. So uh, please listen to this. And uh, 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 it is taking a lot of time because maybe the bandwidth is low and poor. We should not be doing this. Are not audible properly, sir. Okay, so uh, you get you get the idea. Actually, one could possibly book a hotel room using augmented reality and makes it more interesting. Is what uh, this particular uh, uh, video shows, and this is a work of a designer who is trying to. Uh, I was trying to use augmented reality in commercial uh, applications. So uh, I will now uh, yeah, quit the, uh, yeah. So uh, you see, lots of things are possible. And uh, even in automobiles today, uh, uh, head up displays are now available where even existing automobiles, one can buy them and then just put them up and they project onto the screen uh, what is happening and what is uh, to come. So uh, another thing that is going to come up in uh, possible end of this year are smart glasses where everybody wears them like glasses, unlike the heavy ones that are now still in at lab stage. So I, actually a lot of work is happening on this area and very, very soon the, uh, uh, talks about wearable contact lens VR glasses are already happening and companies are trying to fabricate these things. So uh, AR can provide information during an assembly process in manufacturing. For example, here is a GIF that shows uh, how you know, uh, a, a, a complete a plant uh, assembly uh, uh, or a, say a explanation of the process, a process going wrong or whatever, it can be done. And uh, this is much, uh, cheaper than going and filming it and creating an entire film. But how were all these designed and built? That is the question we are looking at today. For this, we have to have to understand what AR is conf configured with. So uh, how does augmented reality work? Augmented reality can be divided into four main phases, which additional content superimposition is made possible. An AR solution captures a part of the environment using a camera or smartphone. So this is what happens uh, from the device. Then it scans the captured piece of the environment to identify a point called a tracker, you know, where or a marker where to overlay additional information, uh, uh, you know, like infrared, laser, GPS, or sensors. 
and uh, this particular uh, information is already uh, there in the mobile and it just maps it together and projects it onto the screen making it look as though it's part of reality so as soon as this point is determined an augmented reality solution requests predefined content from the storage to you know uh, creating now once the necessary content is requested the solution forms a complete image consisting of real world background and overlay area so this mapping is 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 what you know is real technology Here, the size the scale the screen everything is uh, uh, matters so this is what uh, this is how augmented reality are built and in ar it is a flat screen whereas in vr uh, further processes make it into a stereo and you see uh the projection on to two different parts to uh, two different eyes left and right uh one of the uh, you know uh, technologies is motion tracking technology because it has to continuously map the frames of uh at end disposition uh with respect to the device as well as the content because a live camera is feeding it so uh, you know there's something called six degrees of freedom technique and tracking and hardware is the real heart of uh, the technology inside any of these devices so uh, you know the, the ar building blocks rely on this hardware here this layer of uh, uh, what we call as ar vr controller boards and some of the examples of sensors are given here for specifications or what is involved in, in current very uh, mobiles so multimedia um, advanced video graphics power management uh, wifi if in case you know the uh, the communication between the devices wifi so uh, six axis sensor all these are part of mobile so uh, uh, now uh, the, the the hardware actually uh, what it does is it scans and then an image analyzer unit inside by software analyzes it makes a decision uh, when to project on um, uh, depending upon the marker cue that it gets and then you know so but then what is the what is the software that goes inside to build all this how how do is one actually do it you know so in in that the content creation you know uh, the, the content is actually the heart of entire uh, usefulness of augmented reality or virtual reality so this content creation and content overlay Uh, the content overlay is taken care by the software technology and hardware but content creation has to be done by the human outside so now this whole visualization happens and there is a process which we will see now to do this inside mapping up uh, there are soft uh, software development kits one of them is before you and such devices are used to <coughs> combine all these three the content the hardware and the software and that is how we get what is called an ar product so this before we are uh, as together are others also but this is the most popular and uh, now uh, th there's a flow they if you go to their flow diagram they tell you how uh, things are connected and how wh what are the various uh, uh, signals that move around inside and how, what happens you know finally uh, such a
while on the time. Now the display of my is full 360 degree view, whereas this is flat and 2D. But on this Center design. So, of the user. So, uh, what if, if it's a mathematics teacher? What is this uh, that the mathematics teacher wants? Or if it's a sportsman, what to be created to its very fine quality? If if you know it is not done immediately, the brain knows that uh, it is just some uh, artificial. Only they are doing now. So there, there are the, yes, humans, and there are software. All the three put together become a VR system, and that is tricky to design. Now, uh, Here, no, the person should be allowed to go wherever you want, and uh, see that is what means non linear. And your software must completely be ready, capable of it, and has anticipated it. So, most we are content today is a combination of all this. Then, we choose what is called a narration type. How do you want the narration first person, second person, third person? Uh, 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 how, how do you want the user to get involved? It also involves in the degrees of freedom, and you know the field of view, FOV, uh, these two matters. And then we go about ascertaining the interaction parameters. We proceed visualizing and designing the content starting with wireframing or storyboarding using templates. So what is it? Now, before we go, uh, this technology is perfecting. Yes, but regardless of however perfect it is, uh, what has been observed is there is a lot of cyber sickness associated with such uh, created reality. People have motion sickness. Most of the population has reported this, and uh, so it is not got a, uh, not only to do with technology and quality, but it is also to do with I think uh, uh, fiddling around with the way a person's brain operates because you are trying to trick the brain or you are trying to you know change the brain's reality, physical body's reality. So motion sickness is the most reported thing. And you feel uh, after five, 15 minutes, you feel dizzy, you know, you're spinning, uh, you know, you, you feel like lying down, there's blurred vision, there's confusion and disorientation, uh, you know, saying that where I was, where I am. Some have reported nausea, uh, vomiting, back pressure changes. So uh, this is still perfecting and still trying out. And the, uh, uh, for that, you know, designers are studying why it is happening and going right up to the roof. The other thing is the, the field of view. You see, as human beings, we don't see what is happening in the back. We rely more on sounds from the back. 
but our our field of view is limited and we have to restrict it in vr when we create a content yet we must have the content here if supposing the person the user turns fully around the content also changes isn't it no so uh, that, that is where the technology uh, tricky part comes in in designing content so we start with uh, in vr case uh, with you know uh, what we call as templates storyboards we we have a, a, like film making basically and we use you know foreground mid ground background uh, so designers uh, know uh, these things very well and they start visualizing the whole thing because we have to create the whole thing in 3d okay and uh, we go in great detail what happens how do we uh, you know make the the, the the person a little emotional here uh, in games this is very very important when do we you know make uh, the person uh, win something at the point when the person want to give up the game so how it is done you know the vr uh, it, 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 when we look at what is inside uh, this thing and we open up and flatten it this is what the pixel of a picture will be when we flatten it this is actually a 360 degree uh, picture of view here and the software circulates it round and round okay so this is what actually it is when we open it up so how do we deal with it now uh, in, in, in we have to build it up now we have to build it up with pixel wise or, or vector wise in, in, in creating the thing so we have we have to go by uh, uh, all the same norms and supposing you know we have this 360 degree film shot in a 360 degree camera we have these cameras available and they shoot they have lenses on all the sides they shoot a complete 360 degree view and stitch together so uh, uh, now we we had start with such a film in in, in vr content creation let's say you want to add some controls some graphic uh, gui controls on off start the movie stop the movie uh, add sound uh, in, uh, something like that let's assume that so let's say we need to put it here we need to put the controls here because the, of the field of vision is very limited and also the pixel and everything is very expensive so we got to fix it also in vr we can't keep floating it uh, for the user chasing where it is where it is okay so this is how we start and plan it and then we use tools uh you know like here we are using a tool called sketch uh, it is a special tool for creating vr and it's used in design now after designing and inserting you are you will require a vr player so what we do is we take out this part and we start uh, manipulating this part only and insert it back in the film as a layer so so here is it so this part is taken out and we using sketch we create these transparent <coughs> screens buttons we use a png file and we build in interactivity we build in buttons that go in and out and we connect that button by a routing you know as a trigger inside the software is so all this is software pure and the position of this is known and then uh, this is how you know we create the entire scene or a content and we put this back onto the screen and uh, we test it and then what happens is we load it back onto the headset here we use the same vuforia software same uh, 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 unity software to do this stitching together and this is now ready now now this is this board is put back here integrated and it is interactively live and then we load it on to a head device a uh, head mounted vr or any vr device uh, or google cardboard also your mobile also can be used then it acts exactly like how it was software plan so if if it is a 2d device then it it looks like this if it is a 3d device uh, the software further splits it into two streams left right and creating that illusion of depth inside so this is how we are creating now to create to, to visualize it we require to think in in, in three in, in thing, you know this is difficult and that is why we say designers are uh, very imaginative and they are extraordinary brains they require to understand and keep controlling a 360 degree uh, environment and so we use such simple tools to start with and uh, we, we we use for example lego and so somebody walks into my our studio and you see me playing with legos you will say professor ko kya hua hai why is he playing with legos and small children 
dolls into. But these are actually good simulation because you know these tools we can put markers on them. We can you know make them recognize optically on, on onto a camera. We can do a lot of simulation on using these uh, uh, things first to to create a prototype, a rough prototype. If, you know, this is very expensive. So unless we are very very sure what we are doing, we can't embark upon the final one. And you know th this we try out the experiment. We we try out everything, and then we start planning it for a 360 degree view. You can see every scene, every action will have to fall in a certain uh, area. And uh, otherwise, you know, the, 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 even if the person turns, that um, GUI I showed you in the previous slide, it has also to turn a, a, along with it and be in position ready for the user to use it. So that GUI floating panel of buttons uh, should know positioning, should have an idea of, you know, uh, uh, where exactly it should go and latch itself. So all this requires <coughs> planning and proper uh, designing. It takes lots of problems. So uh, in our studio, we use simple sheets like <coughs> transparent sheets. We create scenes in parts, depth. You know, it's, uh, uh, these these are you know uh, techniques which designers use, and we use sketch pens to sketch on them quickly, roughly to discuss between designers because a sound. Per, expert, he, he will have to have a complete idea visually. We can't just name in words saying I say such a you. Okay, so uh, this is how a, a, you know, a template looks like. And this is called a, a script, you know, a storyboard in, in design language. And in the case of uh, 2D, the storyboard is like this. But in the case of 3D, the storyboard becomes like this because of the curvature that we have to do. And the whole thing is imagined that way. And uh, we use such tools which are available, Sketch, for example. And it's uh, another called Gravity Sketch to uh, really build and uh, use them before we go to Euphoria and Unity. So uh, like in, in, in the previous case, I showed you an augmented reality. Here too, the, these uh, software tools remain the same. But we require, uh, sorry, we require, uh, uh, okay, yeah. We require uh, uh, this particular uh, unity, and uh, this is a free software. It's available, and you can you know it's on Android. Uh, it also works on iOS. You, uh, if you really uh, want to try it out, you can it, try it out. It's not not at all difficult for mechanical engineers, I suppose, because you already know uh, quite a lot of CAD. Uh, some idea of how to create a CAD solid model and things like that. And once you have that, you have to import it into Unity. Once you import it into Unity, uh, there are some instructions, very easy. Then you, you can add uh, interactivity to that model. And you press something on the Tesla model, it will go and turn uh, and do. So you can try these small things and load it on to you know your Google Glass and your mobile and see it in Google Glass. Uh, it, it is actually possible to do this and we make all our FDP uh, and our students also to do this small exercise to start with uh, so that they understand the hang of the all the software and uh, how do we iterate a number of times to get the correct view and things like that. Uh, you, you can you can uh, go to this uh, 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 URL and actually you can download um, the, 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 uh, the uh, you know, uh, loading of the software on, on, on a PC or a laptop PC is better, is a little tricky. But once you do it, you will uh, actually enjoy it and you will have uh, got the answer of how, you know, VR is actually created. So uh, here, you know, we I'll show you an, uh, 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 a project and, and a paper in research that we did. Uh, what we were trying to do is design uh, a keypad for uh, virtual reality. So why we said as a flat keypad existing is no fun because the, the, the VR is three dimensional. So why not have 3D uh, keypad? But then, uh, you know, uh, our imagination went wild, designers are designers. And we said, uh, how do we put it? If we put it together like this, we said, what is the difference between a three dimensional keypad and a two dimensional keypad? Both look same, uh, but then so why we scatter it? So, but then uh, we don't know how, uh, users will use it, will they like it, will they get confused, 
Uh, yeah, so this is how we plan research. This is what we do in simple fundamental research. And uh, we, we take perception values. And one of the papers we presented uh, in, in two different places, I'm combining together here. And these are my students here who have done this together. And uh, this is presented in Sweden, I think. Yeah. So uh, how are GUIs to be arranged in 3D space? This was the question. Can a 2D GUI's design be directly transferred in virtual reality GUIs as far as interactivity is concerned? And by interactivity, interaction design, we mean. Uh, it's another uh, subspecialization. Now, interaction input in 2D GUI has reference and defined guidelines. Uh, we have very good guidelines. Uh, uh, but here in 3D, we don't have. So will the 2D guidelines uh, hold good. That was also part of our research question. And uh, what prompted uh, this study is, you know, uh, as I said, uh, th th this uh, calculator keypad is different from a mo mobile keypad. Am I right? If you don't know, you should know actually that these two keypads are arranged in a different way. One is designed for minimum error, the other one is designed for maximum comfort. So, calculator calculation is different. Mobile mobile one uh, is it is done so that minimum error is there when you input a mobile phone. That is the calculator is done in a very simple different way. So now can we take a mobile one and a calculator one, mix up at, and then uh, actually reproduce it in VR? And can we operate it by the eye, or have we to operate it by hand? Or how do we operate it by hand? Uh, that means a virtual hand inside. So. These were the aims and objectives of this particular research. And we wanted to find out FOV and we wanted to find out, uh, it's just inquisitiveness, you know, uh, how do we do it? So we divided it into uh, uh, experimental stages. We said, okay, we, we give a phone number, a dialing task, and uh, we ask the participants to enter a 10 digit phone number uh, in, in a augmented reality product we actually created. We have, we have to create this, I told you, we created the whole thing and we gave them this task and we wanted to find out which one will be better or uh, acceptable when there will be errors, when they get confused. So we wanted to find out these parameters and we wanted to compare uh, those two, three keypads. So we, what we did was we went to uh, uh, this number of participants and in one we used head gaze and in half of them we used hand gesture. Uh, this is A and B sort of testing, and we wanted to compare the two actually. And then finally, uh, you know what we we, we had we had these three keys: a conventional neural keypad, uh, a three-dimensional floating buttons. You know these are floating buttons in the space, horizon space. And the same floating button, we said, why don't we uh, arrange it in circular? Because uh, one of the designers said the circular is better. This will all go everywhere. Circular will remain in the same. So I said, okay, let's first try it. And then we said, should it be hand operated or eye operated? Meaning the operation part. Because just having GUI is not the same. Na? Inside the user's virtual hand will operate it. Okay. So we combined together the results and we used NASA TLX. Uh, it's a standard method. And we use a system usability scale. Uh, these are some standard methods we use in uh, interaction design and user experience design. And we conducted this experiment and we found, you know, uh, several uh, interesting things uh, about it. And uh, th these two configurations, and this is what we, we try to find out is what I, again, I'm repeating. And, uh, you know, uh, okay, so this is the, the, this is the view of, of, of through the Google uh, Glass hand mounted device. And this is the gaze, eye gaze. And then, uh, perceived ease of use and perceived usability is what we wanted to find out. So uh, I will not go into the detail of the experiment. I'll come to uh, you know the result directly. And we were trying to calculate the ergonomics, uh, you know, the workload, the community load. So here, what was the result? Uh, see, uh, the circular keypad 2D took uh, greater time than the cubes keypad. Okay, the circular one, circular one arrangement. And uh, the workload, circular keypad, uh, required much more work than the cubes keypad. So, but as designers, we thought the expected circular would be actually better because we thought, hey, this is a great 
there's an innovation, so let's do it. But then, you know, when we test it in VR, uh, it turned out to be that our uh, hypothesis is not correct. As such, and uh, it's a green field. So, whether gaze pointing or users can to be used. So, uh, uh, you know, some users you know, said gaze pointing is cool. Yeah, the others said you no. Know, this hand stuff seems to be good. Yeah. So, this hand stuff we they didn't like the hand. So, we said, why don't we use gesture instead of an artificial hand? We we'll use gesture. So, uh, the hand, the virtual hand, shows some gestural um, movements. So, for example, to say three, it shows three fingers, and number three will be dialed. So we tried that interface. So we, after all these uh, trials, you know, we found some very interesting results, which uh, are, are worthy to continue. And we, we understood we are as designers and content. But I'll show you the, the video. And these are the two or three separate posters and papers uh, uh, that are available. And I'll see if I could uh, attach it to the slides and notes that I will give it to, to the organizers for it to circulate to you later on. So this is the Sorry. I hope it's playing. Yeah. 
target audience. So, there is a need to develop a common set of gestures that are applicable across India. Secondly, gestures in India are highly ambiguous. A classic example of this ambiguity is the great Indian headlong. Does it mean a yes, a no, a maybe? It is difficult to say without the knowledge of the text. Finally, the design of gestures to take the influence of culture into account, and a single gesture might have different meanings across different cultures. In such a diverse setting, a one to one mapping of gestures function would require a lot of detailed learning. So, we intend to empirically derive common gestures along with their context in a particular cultural situation and enlist those commonly understood gestures into a dictionary. This dictionary can then be used as a guideline by interaction designers, designing for and ending for this. Okay, this, that was the same paper presented and, uh, you know, uh, so I have now just uh, completed the virtual reality part and hopefully I have communicated what are all the issues behind and how do we take and how it works and what it requires to build it. I will now come to the last part that is the mixed reality part, uh, which is very, very exciting now and that is the current scene that is happening right now outside. So mixed reality is a blend of physical and digital worlds. So mixed reality actually is a combination of uh, AR as well as VR. They are both combined together, but with a lot more freedom uh, for the user, not constrained and as close as possible to reality. So. Uh, mixed reality is 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 uh, a blending of the physical world with the digital world, so much so that uh, uh, which is real and which is generated is uh, very difficult to distinguish. And uh, you see, the, the the mixed reality, all the three are important players: a human, a computer, and and the, the environment in which uh, this uh, mixed reality will work. And it may work in a real shop floor, a real assembly plant. It will work in real, uh, you know, uh, hospital. So it, it it is going to be involving uh, reality as what it is. And the human being is going to be a very important part of it. So far in engineering, we have always treated engineering as something to do with the materials, processes, and everything. We have never ever studied human beings except maybe for one course in humanities and social sciences or something. But then technology today cannot be built without making a human being as a variable part, uh, just like any other uh, part in engineering that we put together in assembly. Now the need for taking the human brain and human way of functioning has come and mixed reality is heavily dependent upon how neatly we can create, put, integrate all these three. Spatial sounds is important. Location is important. The head tracking is very important. You see, I just showed you in that VR film in India, uh, whether we say yes or no, uh, only another Indian will understand it. No other person on earth will understand it. Foreigner along with you will say, but how did you know you were saying yes or no? He said, well, it's very clear. It's what you would like. So it is something ingrained. So head tracking, you know, head moving, it means a lot of different things. And whatever software we comes from outside will not be useful. Plus, you see, a software point of view in VR, let's say uh, Microsoft does it and sends it, uh, all are six feet tall there. And uh, a professor like me who is only five feet tall, I can't wear that and then wear high heels and lift my head uh, to that level and to see, otherwise the whole world will look. So you see, everything is in reality and it, it only has to the complexity. Uh, but mixed reality is where the entire thing is going to go now. and. It is so good, the, the benefits of it outweigh and the already VR glasses are out and they are available. For example, Microsoft HoloLens. No, it is a mixed reality device uh, and other devices still are heavy and blind, but this Microsoft HoloLens, they have bet it totally. They are, it is very light, you wear it and it's just like maybe a little bigger specs so far. 
and it's 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 unbelievable what it is so they use what is called as a hologram everybody knows what a hologram is it's physical physics properties created by light uh, you know and uh, uh, this is how uh, holograms are uh, holograms are, are objects made of light and sound that appear in the world around us like real objects they can even interact with real world surfaces around you with holograms you can create digital objects that are part of your world so here is just a, a glimpse of a meeting going on and uh, these people there uh, they, they are not in present where this person is sitting or this lady is sitting and they are all having a meeting but they are all in different places and yet they are standing in the meeting they are, and this is a hologram of the other user who is attending the meeting here so this is what is possible so a hologram is made up of basically light and sound the question is how do you generate it it's it's only a refinement of the technology but we can now do it for very small spaces and very small objects at the moment we can do it so now once you know you can do it you can mix augmented reality like this panel that i've discussed in the previous slides and uh, you know all of them can share the same virtual space that they are in so when this one operates this they are also seeing what she's going to operate from the other end you know so the, our our classrooms are going to be round and really like labs you know and the whole thing is going to change now how we, uh, uh, we interact how we do it's very close to naturally how we do so a hologram is whatever you can dream of actually mechanical engineers with a very creative bent of mind and proficiency in 3d cad can comfortably design architects designers are already using such holograms in terms of 3d uh, images so when when we create content for mixed reality the same storyboarding process goes on but then the point of view changes because we have to take the point of view of the person also the point of view of someone in that scene wearing it to get it is around it for this person this should be you for this that should be the view but the 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 virtual reality created product remains the same you see how complex it starts becoming even to visualize and understand it Uh, for example microsoft is doing really good work so micro they are they given toolkits like how uh, the toolkits are made available they are made available free and but we, uh, devices are of course very expensive uh, education institutions can um, uh, uh, have access to them and what are these toolkits you can actually create these uh, uh, elements models what you want holograms and you can actually create this is nothing but continuation of the 3d Uh, uh environment which engineers know about it to that argumentation is added and to that this fov this positioning this marking you know detecting uh, where the position is head movement all that is added and taken care of and then you have a mixed reality design ready i am saying it in a very simple way but it takes large teams to sit together and create one simple 10 minute virtual reality thing here are some gifs examples of virtual reality here for example a wind uh, laboratory is going on uh, you know virtual reality laboratory uh, uh, iit guwahati already has a virtual reality laboratory up and you can access it but it is for interaction design and now here you know uh, online education or whatever can be very easy here because the entire lab is there wind is created exactly as it is so everything is created virtual parameters are created and control panels are available to do so here is another one gif which shows you know in an architect's office uh, a client and others are, are actually seeing an actual building uh, being constructed even before it is done and somebody else from, who is not present in the room is present as Uh, hologram avatars and uh, they are somewhere else in some other town but they are having the same devices and they are connected by internet and this is what they see in, in this architect's place and they can discuss all the it's mind boggling and they have demonstrated all this thing already in medicine this is a boom uh, and you can exactly map a real uh, a body part uh, to a, a part and 
the surgeons are very, very happy because they are very sure they plan it out in VR before they go, uh, what to do, what to do. And they're very confident and they're sure what to uh, expect inside. And they're also used for training doctors, you know. So a mixed reality is the future. It is going to be very, very uh, pervasive and, and everywhere in our uh, institutions. And, and it requires a lot of engineers now to qualify in this. That's why AICT and the government of India wants a lot of this VR uh, experts to come up. Uh, and so now the same uh, uh, Microsoft um, HoloLens, they, they have a hollow sketch. They, they provide all this uh, thing. Uh, hollow sketch is similar to a 3D uh, uh, an environment, CAD environment, but it has this other thing like uh, adding markers, adding positions, creating, it allows you to create uh, entire models like CAD uh, uh, and then uh, you, they make it live. Uh, but you can also import uh, in this uh, models from uh, any other CAD and you can create the whole thing and you know, you can make it embed in the virtual reality. And finally, you can uh, put all the together, augmented reality, actual reality, as you see in the photograph, and the visually uh, hologram created non-existent chair. You know? So it's a question of surface, you know, uh, refinement. And there's a ren rendering engine capability, processor capability, your uh, memory capability, all, this, all, all that matters. But eventually, it's going to happen. And you now this toolkit, uh, you know, it, it has uh, such uh, interaction possibilities and how do you uh, attach to it? Uh, how do you integrate it? So that a uh, user touches this surface, something happens. So uh, it is uh, now possible to do all this by using uh, this toolkit provided. So we, uh, at our labs and uh, at several other labs also in IITs and others, a lot of work is happening in VR in different different fields. Our lab specializes in the human computer interaction uh, area and we call it interaction design. And we do a lot of work here. Uh, very recently, we, kind of, uh, we finished a PhD where, you know, uh, we, you know this problem in engineering colleges, uh, electronics laboratory. We don't have sufficient uh, lab assistants to help when experiments are going on. And uh, so we, we created a, a mixed reality uh, a breadboard. So when, when, the, when the mixed reality breadboard is kept there and uh, the, the student finds uh, something, they can cross check the circuit uh, by just using the mobile phone on which preloaded software is there. The mobile phone will exactly tell saying that, look, the resistor is wrongly placed. You, you know, it's very interesting. We have done this actually. I don't have time to share this. It's a very large project. And uh, this was awarded in PhD also. And it has also taken uh, uh, note of all over the world. You know, he was our ambassador uh, invited. Uh, uh, and we, 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 we do a lot of exciting work in our lab. And uh, we hope that other engineering colleges also work on it. But uh, uh, our lab, we, we call it usability engineering. It consists of user experience, user interfaces, interaction design, and uh, HCI, that is computer science and others. So it's a very, very new discipline that is coming up. And it's an amalgamation of all disciplines. And uh, you know, it takes some time and it's possible. So this is uh, our lab and, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, uh, wish and invite you if uh, you are anywhere around here to just walk in and take a look at it. Uh, I just completed uh, my uh, lecture on uh, whatever I wanted to share uh, on this particular uh, lecture. I have the last 10 minutes uh, left for uh, you uh, to, uh, you know, uh, add um, uh, anything that you would like to ask, comment, or you no? Know, I would. I would be happy to uh, interact. You know, it was hectic, but then uh, the, to give a bird's eye view, one has to take a lot of examples and uh, give it so that uh, you get a, a proper understanding. And it's not difficult at all. The, the idea behind this particular lecture was. Uh, to all the uh, you know, unknown things and say, if you really try, you it will be possible to do it. 
you have all the things required. Huh? You have a Google Cardboard, you have your good mobile, you have cards, and you have powerful computers also in your lab. So try it out. In the first few times it may be difficult, but just uh, once you understand it, then you know you can go for more complex uh, uh, use. And, uh, and your students are very good. I mean, most of the work uh, our students do it and just play for you. So that's all that I had to share. And now I leave uh, the floor open to uh, the participants if uh, they have any comments to make or if they want to know something more about it. Any questions, participants? So there are no questions in the chat box. Uh, sir, no questions is, in the chat box. Uh, sir, there is one question from uh, uh, Sunita Rawat. Yes. Uh, Ma'am has asked uh, the question, what is Ion XR? Ion XR, uh, it is for the session tomorrow. It is a it is an app uh, which is used by a company called Ion Reality. It is a learning app. It is, I mean, a virtual reality platform for learning. Okay, sir. And uh, uh, one more uh, participant, uh, Ajiz Barman, he has raised the hand. Ajiz, you are there? You were having uh, questions. Okay, sir. Uh, there are no questions in the chat box. Hemant uh, says, very nice session. Thank you. Uh, yeah, somebody has used a hand. I am not sure whether, you know, uh, it is by by default or by a, a particular thing. Anyway, so everything is available it, it, uh, for trials. It is available on the net. A lot of freeware software is there. Try it out. Just try it out. Take off a, a Saturday, Sunday, every day and do it. It's not at all difficult. The future of hologram in India. As I told you, it's very much. Yes, see, a, a Microsoft company is now holding everything around it. It's fine, uh, but, uh, but then, uh, you know, it may be expensive to use, but it has tremendous possibilities. I'll tell you, in, 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 a, in, a, in a banking ATM, we were working on another uh, project somewhere in the ATM. You may not believe the, the ATM is a very, very difficult machine to operate by majority of Indian uh, people who live in rural areas. They are confused. They don't like it at all. And they, 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 don't, they don't know to press, what to do. They can't read it. Why the rural people, even many times after so many years, if I am confronted with a totally new ATM of some other bank, I get confused. You know, I said, what is this now? What to do next? Why are the button not here? So now in such ATMs, if holograms are used to project onto in three dimensions, <laughs> uh, it becomes so easy for anyone to understand. See, our, we live in a three dimensional world. And we understand the three-dimensional world better than the two-dimensional world. Uh, you know, so uh, it has great, great possibilities. Uh, in teaching, uh, tremendous. In medicine, in, in engineering, you know, instead of um, you can teach uh, uh, about a week's work, uh, in, in just two hours, you can communicate the essence of it. Uh, so uh, the, the efficiency of uh, uh, using the hologram methods of, of uh, creating MR but very soon there will be other companies also doing this, you know, it's uh, software and all that will, will be there. Is it possible for you to share email or contact details for any further communication? Yes, um, it is Pradeep at iitg.ac.in. You can also ask the organizers, they have it. Yes, sir. How can I add AR in the book? Okay, see, I showed you that um, uh, example. Now, what uh, the, the AR is not in the book. What we did was in that mobile when the uh, bonds were being uh, called back on the screen, we took the photograph of the textbook and we called it a trigger and we, as a marker. And we encoded it inside our mobile. Right? So next time the mobile camera goes to that page of that model, it will show the 3D model that we have also loaded because the software connects it. Right? And the 3D model starts floating onto the 
2D surface and you can manipulate it. So uh, the, 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 the AR is not in the book, but AR is inside the model, but the picture in the book acts as a marker because we determined it so, we fixed it so. We took a picture of that picture and we trained the image recognition software inside to say, this is a marker. The moment you see this marker, trigger, run this subroutine, show this 3D model. So this is how it works. I hope you understood uh, 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 and I've answered the question. What will bring production prices down <laughs> a competition? Uh, you see, uh, a, a, uh, the, the hologram is very expensive. It costs about uh, one to two lakhs, uh, but a lab can afford it still because if you take the number of students who are using it, therefore, yes. Uh, but it is uh, headsets. Uh, they come down. Google Cardboard is, 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 is you know, almost uh, costless. And your mobile can also be used uh, for a VR. It is not the same as mixed reality. I agree. But uh, you, you can start with uh, uh, VR, uh, virtual reality. We are using Google Cardboard mobile and be ready for, uh, see, all our students have done this in VR only. Uh, in fact, we have not worked in mixed reality at all so far. That's why I don't have any cases to show you. Uh, all, all our cases are VR. But the step to uh, uh, mixed reality would not be so difficult after uh, you have been working in VR. Okay, so uh, uh, all of you, uh, uh, okay, you want us to come in, okay. Uh, fine, so how are the manufacturing features of solid model can be used in VR, VR applications? Yes, I showed you, uh, you know, I showed you uh, a, a doctor looking at a human body. So supposing you take this uh, head mounted hologram that you're wearing and uh, a technician has been sent to uh, uh, you know separate the parts so it's a old machine so he has to carry all leaflets blueprint drawings to understand it instead he just wears a headset looks at the machine it is pre-triggered and the mach that particular model's internal assembly becomes visible for him you see we, we have cut down his work so much by doing that and today in aircraft maintenance precisely these headsets are being already used Thank you, sir. It's so quick. Okay. So they are using it already and it can be used in manufacturing also. How can 3D model book be shown to all students? Okay. Uh, uh, you see, we, uh, in fact, there are products available on Amazon where uh, there are cubes, not a book. A cube is there and they also allow you to soft, soft load and you soft load it, uh, download it on, on your mobile. And you show the cube, it will show some science experiments and things like that. It's, 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 it's limited. It's only that much it can show. But uh, it's possible. And it's not very, very expensive uh, for students to get excited about it and use it uh, instead of a textbook. Because ready-made textbooks are not available. When, uh, when a textbook is available, we have to integrate it in, in the VR software. Only then it becomes part of the argumentary reality. Okay, so uh, I think I have answered all the questions. And uh, yes, I have answered most of the questions. Yeah, someone said something. Thank you, Kavita. Okay, so if, if there's no more questions, uh, may I ask the coordinator to you know wind up the session because the next session starts. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having the patience and listening to it. I hope it was useful, at least as an overview of what actually happens uh, in AR, VR, and MR. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next session will start at uh, 12 noon. And I request all the participants to come in the video mode for a group photo.
how was the internet stability at your end um, a, a few feedback will help me understand if you know we, we are really 2700 kilometers away from the main line and uh, was it okay i mean there was disruptions or uh, was the sound clear videos worked well anyone can just still uh, all us come to the screen you know uh, it was very, inf- very informative sir very informative everything two. was very clear hazel free that's perfect yeah, sir no, i'm talking about the transmission i'm talking about the there's no 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 problem at all as far as belgaum is concerned uh, okay no ah, okay okay i hope other participants also could uh, get it as smoothly yes sir other from leave sing and yeah all all of you are there i see a lot of people yes, yes. so nice you know yes. pavitra singh is there pavan rayar oh my screen is not so big i wish it was very very big so all of you could come together okay thank you all thank you yeah you thank can you, uh, tell me when the photograph is over ha uh, sir it's done yeah. sir thank you thank you very much and thank you sir thank you very much have a nice day i take leave now thank you sir thank you thank you uh, okay thank you sir somebody with the provision yes. i'm taking leave bye bye to all